Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a, another video with the SV1000. What we're going to be doing in this video, as the, uh, as the title suggests, is we are going to be looking at the, uh, the, the stator uh, and the condition of the rotor on the stator. Um, it's been widely documented that the magnets on, uh, on the rotor like to become unstuck, um, move uh, and occasionally do break themselves apart, um, especially if they hit the stator um, as, it, uh, as, as the rotor spins. Uh, obviously, if that happens, then there's bits of magnet um, sitting in, inside your engine oil being pushed around the bike, and obviously it's not good. Not only that, um, it can seriously affect um, at least one of the phases on the charging system. So we want to uh, we want to pull it apart and have a good look and make sure that the one on this bike is in fine fettle. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to do some remedial action in order to help prevent the magnets coming off in the future um, but we'll go on to that uh, during the video anyway guys what we're going to do is we're going to dig into it we're going to take some of the parts off and we're going to get in and uh, hopefully we will find that they're they're all in all in order okay guys thanks for stopping by <laughs> In order to get into uh, this cover, what we need to do is we need to take a few bits and pieces off. Um, we'll start with the, uh, the belly pan. It's held in with four bolts, two this side and two on the other side in the same location. I've already taken the two off on the other side just to save a little bit of time. So there we go, that's all four of those off. What we need to do is just pop it off of its lugs and there we are, as you can see, that is the belly pan removed. And what I'll do, I'll put all four bolts with it so that they don't get lost. Okay, what we wanna do next is we wanna get into this cover, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the clutch, uh, clutch slave cylinder and the sprocket cover off and move them out of the way so that they're, we've got unrestricted access to this cover. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we should, we should be able to get it off quite easily. So, to start with, what I'll do, is I'll remove the two bolts holding the clutch slave cylinder in position. Something else that um, these bikes have a propensity to do is leak fluid from the clutch slave cylinder. So while we've got it off, we can actually um, check on its serviceability uh, and if there's any problems we can rectify those before we before we put it back onto the bike so there's the two bolts removed and there is the clutch slave cylinder and it actually looks to be okay so here is the push rod that goes through and operates the clutch And there we are, what we'll do, we'll give that a good clean um, prior to putting it back on. Um, but yeah, so uh, I can't see any, any leaks from it. It certainly looks okay. Yeah, okay. So, pop that to one side, again, with the bolts. And then what we'll do is um, take the sprocket cover off next. Okay, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna remove the, the, uh, the sprocket cover, and that is just held in with three eight mil bolts. So I'll crack those off. Top. 
this one has the uh, little cable clamp on it as well. So obviously we'll make sure we put that back uh, when we uh, refit it to the bike. And they are all different lengths as you can see. So we should now be able to remove that. And there we go. That is the sprocket cover removed. What I could do is I could remove the um, the pickup for the speedo, um, and I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that shortly. Um, I don't need to do that right now. We'll just move that out of the way, along with the clutch slave cylinder. Right. Um, the cabling for the side stand switch. Again, that can be moved out of the way. Um, like so, there we go. Right. Um, what uh, what we, um, in fact, well, I will point out is this is a spacer which goes just there for the uh, for the clutch slave cylinder. That sits just there, so we'll keep that to one side as well. Um, and obviously, all of this in here is quite bogging and does need a very, very good clean. So, um, whilst all this is off, I'll get in there and give it a good, uh, a good clean down um, prior to reassembling everything. Right. Anyway, as we can see, we've now got really good access into this cover. So we need to take all of the bolts out, and again, we'll just use my T-bar to uh, to whack them off. Right, so let's get these bolts out. What I've done, I've put my oil pan underneath because we will most likely lose um, a bit of oil out of here. So what I'll need to do now is just go around and crack them all off. These two here have the bracket for the belly pan in. And then, once they're all cracked off, I just start pulling them out. Now, these will all be different lengths um, of that, I have no doubt, because they often are. I expect these two here to be longer than the others, um, although there may be other lengths in here somewhere. Now, what you can do is you can uh, get a piece of card if you, uh, don't have a very good memory for where things like these go back, get a bit of card, draw an outline of the um, of the cover, and put the bolts in in, in, a, in in holes in the card in the position that they go back on. That way, you won't have any problems. said before those two are longer and it looks like every single other one is exactly the same size as each other yeah they're all exactly the same with the exception of these two but you can see that they are going to be longer because the head of the bolt sits further away okay so right what we're uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to try and remove this cover from the bike we will lose oil don't forget there is a gasket in here and um that will obviously uh, we need to break the seal on the gasket but not only that this will be held in um under magnetic force as well because all those magnets will be holding the cover in place so we have to overcome that as well as try and pull it um, away from the gaskets as well so that's what we're, we're going to do next in fact we've started to oil has actually started to weep already um, at the bottom as you can see so that's the reason why we've got the pan and you can see it's starting to drip so what we need to do is we need to get a good hold of it and try there we go here we go here comes the oil up we will lose a fair bit um, and i can feel i can feel the magnets inside um holding the cover in place Position my my drain pan. Right here we go. Let's. Let's pull her off. 
Okay. Oh. So, if I move that to one side, let the oil just drain out, and let's look at the carnage that has been left behind. So, as you can see, we've had movement of magnets. That one, uh, yeah, these gaps here look to be what they should be. But as you can see, I think that one's okay, but this one and this one have definitely moved. Um, you can see where it used to be. Um, and they are not in the position that they should be. They should be gapped, similar to that. So, when you discover things like that, it kind of makes jobs like this worthwhile. So what we need to do is we need to rectify this and put something in place in order for it uh, not to happen again. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll come on to that very, very shortly. Before, um, before we go any further, what I do want to do is just um, do a couple of things just to uh, make our life easier later. This little uh, bushing here actually holds that sprocket in place and there we go there she is and another thing i will point out is this washer actually sits on there and can quite easily be forgotten about um if you don't put it back on so what i've done i've, I've put it back on there so i know exactly where it is i'll allow this um oil to uh, drain out and then what i'll do i'll come back and then we'll look at how we're going to uh fix this now you can fix this in situ um, if you if you wish, uh, that's entirely up to you. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the uh, I'm going to remove the rotor um, from the bike and uh, fix it that way. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll move on to that next. Okay, as I said a moment ago, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the stator, uh, sorry, the rotor from the bike um, in order to uh, fix this magnet issue. What I've done, I've put a little bit of rag in the uh, in the hole in this gasket uh, because it was constantly dripping oil. It was going to take a little while, so that's just uh, a temporary um, blocker on the oil peeing out. So um, what I've got here is an impact gun. And I'm gonna use that to take the, the hub knot off. I have put the bike into second gear just to hold everything still. So we'll buzz this off. Uh, again, there's a little bit of oil coming out. The end of the crank. And there we go. That is the main bolt. And what we need to do now is we need to remove this from the, uh, the nose of the crank. Now that is, um, a, an epic task in itself and what you need is you need a tool um i have seen people do this with a uh with a bolt however this tool is specially designed for this purpose um and all we do is wind her in like so until she stops and then i'll get i'll change the uh, socket to another one and we'll buzz this in and the uh the the, the rotor should pop off Okay, well I've done a switch direction this time because this time we want to wind it in. So let's buzz it in. Okay, she's going to be difficult. Right, what I think I need to do is I'm going to have to get a breaker bar on it and uh, give it a good, give it a good lever, and hopefully she'll relent um, sometimes what I can uh, you know sometimes what can be helpful is just to get it in there and leave it for a while give it a couple of hours and you may find it just pops off by itself if that's the case and you're laughing so what I'll do I'll um, give it a couple of uh, a couple of goes with my bar and see if I can get her off uh, if not then I'll leave it for a little while and then come back to it later okay here we go as you can see um, she came off um, what I did was I um, actually jammed a uh, copper washer into this uh, into the primary gear and um, that locked it together and um, with the impact gun it made light work of it uh, so I can now remove this tool um, yeah it uh, didn't take too much effort at all oops dropped the tool on the floor right there we are so that's um, that's that off without any damage whatsoever um, you can see the, uh, the guide there, which engages with the wood rough key on the end of the crank. So that's how it, um, that's how it locks together. Um, right, anyway, 
what we need to do is we need to look at these magnets. Now, uh, despite the fact that they've moved, they feel absolutely solid. So what has happened is they've um, the glue has melted or done whatever it's done. It's, it's clearly not held um, and then uh, set again uh, by, by all accounts, by the looks of it. Um, so what we need to do is we need to unstick them in order to put them in the right place. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use heat to do that. Now, I could get a blowtorch on here and that would probably do the job. Uh, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to stick it in the oven. Uh, I'm going to give it a clean first. I'm going to put it in the oven, 200 degrees and probably do it. Um, and that should be enough to, to melt the glue and, and the magnet should be able to freely move. So that's what I'll do. I'll bang it in the oven and uh, yeah, we, uh, we should have a good result from that. Um, I'm not sure how well the, uh, the wife will take to it, uh, but I'm sure she'll be all right. So what I'll do, uh, I'll go and uh, give this a clean first, stick on a baking tray, stick it in the oven for uh, half an hour at 200 degrees and um, see if it rises. What I'll do, I'll bring, bring you back in um, once we've got the magnets unstuck and then we'll look at the next stage to affect the repair on this. Right then, as you can see, um, she's smoking. She's uh, just come out of the oven. Uh, it's been in there half an hour at 200 degrees. So what I've got here, I've got an old screwdriver. And as you can see, I'm wearing welding gauntlets because this is bloody hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently try and prise the magnets away from the rotor. And hopefully they will come away. If they don't, I'm not gonna force them because if I break one, you, you, you can't get them for love nor money. They're uh, not impossible to find. So I'm gonna have to be as gentle as I can. And, and I did feel movement then. Yes, I've got movement as you can see. These two here are moving. So what I need to do is I need to get them so that I can pry them off again without burning myself and there we go and there we are look there's one there's two I'm still oh, this is so hot I can feel it through these gauntlets Some of the glue seems to be still holding. Oh, I can feel it through the gloves. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pry all of these off in exactly the same way as I've done there, and then uh, we'll bring you back in once I've got them all off. Right, there you go. As you can see, I've got all six magnets off and they've all come off in one piece. I haven't broken any and as you can see, we're still smoking. Um, but yeah, what I had to do was I had to use the blowtorch in the end, bit of localized heat and um, that freed off the glue on the last three. But yeah, as you can see, um, she's, uh, she's golden and um, obviously we haven't damaged anything. So all I need to do now is let all of this cool down then um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean off all the evidence of the old glue from both the magnets and the rotor itself. And then we can look at affecting the repair um, and then get it back on the bike. So let's, uh, let's crack on with that. Right then, welcome back. As you can see, I'm giving it a really good clean and it's really nice and uh, free of glue and all that gloopy stuff that was in there before. Um, now it's it's ready to have the magnets reattached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Loctate 609. Now this is a uh, it's a retaining compound. It's not a thread locker, and it's we we use it um, generally for holding bushings and stuff onto shafts and and, and that kind of thing. Um, and it's really really good at it. Um, it cures in the absence of oxygen. Um, so. Yeah, basically all I've done is cleared all the glue, old glue off of each of the magnets and I'm going to apply this and then put them back into position. Uh, it really is that straightforward. Now I've got a little little screw here, obviously around the uh, edge of the uh, of the rotor itself there's these little holes. Now these little holes I believe are there for oil drainage, 
Um, they're not actually that important because on the later model SVs, these holes aren't even there. Um, they, they removed them entirely. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little screw as a, um, as a spacer to basically guide where each of the magnets sits inside. So basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the magnet, put it in place, just nudge it up against that screw and then take it out. Move the screw around and then take the next magnet and so on and so on. And just keep doing that all the way around and that will leave me the right, um, the right gap. So that's, uh, that's basically my plan. Now, before we begin, what I do want to do is obviously want to talk about the magnets themselves. They need to be fitted into the rotor so that the ends that um, are attracted towards each other are pointing towards each other. Do not fit them in the other way around uh, like so. They need to be fitted that way, all the way around. So uh, north and south poles of the magnets towards each other, not north and north or south and south. Okay, so what, um, what we'll do first is I'll get me a little screw through the hole, take the cap off me Loctite and take my first, take my first magnet. Now, pop a little bit on, it is quite, it is quite runny and simply fit it into place, give it a little wiggle to spread it around and then pop the bolt out. Move on to the next one and do the same again. Don't need a massive amount, that should be enough. And then fit it in place. And obviously get rid of any any of the excess. And that's like, uh, that's how I'm gonna do them all. So that's the first two in. What I'll do, I'll get the other four in and then I'll bring you back in and then we can look at what we're gonna do with the JB weld. Okay, there we are. That is all the magnets refixed back into their respective positions and the space in between each one is obviously correct. So what we need to do now is make sure they don't ever move again. And that's what the, where the, uh, the JB weld comes in. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop that to one side for the moment. I've got a piece of aluminium. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna use this in between each one uh, and that should, um, stop them moving um, ever again. If, if there's no gap there, then they uh, they can't move. Now, what will happen is, it, obviously it's gonna fill in the holes, but as I explained before, that shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Now, this uh, JB weld is um, basically the the original cold weld, it says. Um, still reinforced epoxy. Um, mixed at a ratio of one to one, it forms a permanent bond, can be shaped, tapped, filed, sanded, and drilled after curing. At room temperature, JB Weld sets in four to six hours to a dark grey colour. A full cure is reached in 15 to 24 hours. That won't be a drama because I'm not going to uh, be fitting it today. JB Weld has a tensile strength of 5,020 psi and can withstand temperatures up to 550 degrees Fahrenheit when fully cured. Um, so 550 Fahrenheit is about 290 Celsius, give or take a degree or two. 288, 289, something like that. Um, so more, more than adequate for the, uh, for the, you know, the environment we're going to be using it. So um, as it says, a mixture of one to one. So what I'll do, I'll pop it out of the packet. So basically what you've got, just like any epoxy, you've got this one's called steel and this one's a hardener. So mix them together and it'll obviously go off it. I'd imagine um, like uh, arrow dye or something like that, it probably gets hot um, as, you, as you mix them together. So what I'll do, I will pop, uh, basically what I'll do, I'll get half a tube. And if we need any more, we'll just mix them more after. That's half a tube. And then the same amount of hardener. Ooh, just pierce the, pierce the top. And 
there we go that's about it's about right in it doesn't have to be milliliter perfect and then what we need to do is simply mix the two together and what we're aiming to do is get rid of any streaks so it's all one uniform color just like that I reckon I reckon we're good right now what we are going to do is I'm going to tip the rotor on its end I'm basically going to spoon this mixture in between all of the magnets doesn't really matter if I get too much on like as it said it can be sanded afterwards in a second and give it a little bit of a tidy doesn't have to look pretty at the moment This is basically the way we're going to do it. So what I'll do, I'll carry on, get all of these gaps filled in, and then I'll bring you back once we've got them all done. Right then, there we are. As you can see, all of them have been filled in and I've uh, smoothed them all back. Now, um, it's been a little while actually since I, uh, since I added the JB Weld to the, uh, to the rotor because I've had a lot of other projects on which I've had to deal with. Um, so I've finally had a bit of time to come back to this. But I have um, obviously in that time um, finished it up. So as you can see, they're nice and smooth and all the gaps are filled in. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really matter how pretty it is as long as it's doing what it, you've put it in there to do. Um, and uh, as you can see, yeah, it is. So what I've done is um, I've basically smoothed each of the uh, each of the little blobs of JB weld to be level with the top of the magnets. So when I run my finger, I can I can feel it obviously slightly, but there, you know, it's not sitting proud or anything like that. Now, um, one thing to note is the inside diameter of the rotor is. Um, let's measure it is about 120 about 120 millimeters uh give or take a few hundred microns um, and the outside diameter of the um of the stator is 100 uh, 119 millimeters so you've got half a millimeter either side of the uh either side of the stator um clearance so as long as this doesn't stick up by more than half a millimeter you should be fine and obviously they won't interfere with each other so that's uh that's um worth bearing in mind now all i did was i just used 80 grit 80 grit paper to to uh back this off and um it did a really really good job of it it wasn't difficult it wasn't a particularly strenuous task it took a little bit of time you know just to finish it up neatly but um yeah uh other than that i'm uh, i'm really happy with the way it's um way it's turned out so um, now we are ready to get this bad boy back onto the bike. Okay, before we go to fitting it, um, what I will do is just quickly discuss the uh, the JB weld that I used. Obviously, I used the epoxy, the two part epoxy type, uh, to do this, and you know it did. It's done what I needed it to do, and um, seems to have done done it to the standard uh, at which I wanted it. Um, 
There is another product out called uh, by JB World as well called Steel Stick. What I'll do, I'll link them both in the description so you can you can choose which one you want to do. It's um, Steel Stick. It's basically like an epoxy. Well, it's like a putty actually. Um, it's like a two-part putty, and it's got two different colours through it. And all you do is you cut off the amount that you need, and you mix it together until there's no streaks, and press it into where you want it. Um, that you know be just as good for this job. Um, uh, I don't know how we uh, if it's any easier to sand or or anything like that. I don't know because obviously I didn't use it. Um, but it looks like a really, really good uh, user, usable product um, um, and obviously a good alternative for this. So that's worth bearing in mind. OK, so what we need to do is fit this back onto the uh, back onto the bike. Now, um, what I need to do is obviously take the centre bolt out of the crank. Pop that down there. Now, on the side here, we've got the little wood rough key, which is obviously going to engage here. So make sure that that's in, otherwise all that will happen is the rotor will spin around the uh, nose of the crank and um, not do what it's supposed to do. So if we pop that on there, give it a little turn. There we go. And there we are. That's uh, fitted in place. Then, we can fit the bolt. Right. What we're going to do now is we need to torque this. So, um, in order to torque it, what we're going to uh, we're going to need is an assistant really to make our lives easier. And our assistant will go over to the other side of the bike. We'll put the bike into uh, a high gear, and then my assistant will press on the rear brake whilst I torque that bolt up. So what I'll do, I'll go and uh, crack the manual open, have a quick look at what the torque spec is for that, and then we'll get it tightened up. Okay, so what I've done, I've checked the manual, and the torque setting for this bolt is 140 newton meters, which is quite tight. So obviously all that's gonna happen is this is gonna turn the engine over against the compression, and I'm not gonna be able to hold it still. So what I've got, I've got a copper washer, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jam that into the gear um, to basically lock it. And that should hopefully hold it still. With my assistant also on the brake. That took a bit of effort, so what we need to do now, just recover the little copper washer and then we can uh, move on to the next step. Okay, so there's my little copper washer recovered. Uh, as you can see, it's absolutely mullered. Um, the, the beauty of copper washers is they, they'll deform like that. Um, and they don't do any damage to any of the steel components, but they do a good job of locking the two together um, So you can do things like that um, But obviously that's fit for the bin now, but uh, obviously that was expected. Okay So now the uh, the rotor is all fitted and all good what we uh, we're in a position now really to Put the cover back on now. Um, obviously I have to fit the uh, the stator back into the cover um, but the cover itself, I'm in the process of actually giving a lick of paint because it was quite, quite scabby on the outside. So I've cleaned it up um, and I'm going to give it a paint and hopefully it'll come out, um, you know, in, reasonable, in a reasonable finish. And it'll look all right on the side of the bike. Um, this is the obviously the, the old gasket and I've got a new one of those so that can get junked. And then I'll um, clean up this gasket face um, so, that, uh, so it makes a, a good seal. Um, obviously up here you've got a dowel which is worth remembering where it is uh, make sure it's still in there uh, when we come to fit the cover back on now one thing that is super important and I see this so many times on forums and on Facebook groups is this little washer here on the starter gear loads of times I've seen people that have put the bike back together they've done this very job put the bike back together and then when they've um, got the cover on and all that good stuff they're like Where's this washer come from? I found it in my oil pan or somewhere like that because it fell out. This washer belongs there. 
On top of that, there's this little bush. Now, this little bush, you don't tend to hear people asking this question so much because this, bo this bush is often retained with the cover. Um, but yeah, that washer, that's where it goes. And that little bush sits on there if it's not in the cover. This sleeve here fits over there. And uh, yeah, provided you remember that washer, that bush is either there or in the cover. And that, that uh, spacer sleeve is fitted there and uh, you shouldn't go wrong. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna call a wrap on this, uh, this video because um, obviously I can't fit the cover until I've painted, uh, until I've painted it. I'm also doing the, uh, the clutch side one as well so that they're, you know, the, the finish is the same. Um, if not absolutely identical um, and then obviously I'll fit that one as well but whilst I've got the clutch side off I may as well do the uh, the clutch mod as well to uh, prevent any chudder issues um, which is obviously another notorious issue that this bike suffers from so I'll um, I'll do that at the same time while the cover's off and then that's the the uh, the, the charging rotor um, and the clutch chudder issue completely solved um, and I shouldn't have any problems at all moving forward. So there we are. I can uh, I can now bring this this video to a close. That is the um, the rotor fix for the uh, the magnets on the SV. Um, not a particularly difficult job. It would be nice if uh, Suzuki had obviously um, done something with this in the first place, but like you know, like a, a plastic cage that holds the magnets in place, like the KTM's do, uh, or certainly some KTM's do. Um, you know, they could have solved this uh, when, when in the design phase, but. Um, Obviously the community um, figures out a way and uh, this is it. Um, so yeah, if you're, uh, if you're having charging problems and you take your cover off and find your rotors have all, uh, your magnets have all shifted, this is the, uh, this is the fix for you. So hopefully you, uh, you enjoyed this video. Um, you know, stick around for more with the, uh, with the SV, not just the SV, the VFRs, the ZX9R, the GSXR, all of the bikes, the scooters as well. Um, you know, we've got uh, plenty of stuff to come. Uh, join me on the socials, uh, Kev Shed on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you over there. Hopefully uh, I'll um, welcome you uh, into, uh, into each of those groups. Um, I will leave links to the JB World and all that sort of stuff uh, in the description below so you can go and check out what I actually use for this. Um, and uh, yeah, that, uh, that guys is it. Take care. Bye bye now.